The Gatorade Cup Series heads to the Monster Mile in Dover, Delaware for the running of the Goodies 400 and the last race before the All-Star Race. So a win here for some drivers would be very crucial in their season and trying to lock up a chase spot. On the pole is one of those drivers who need to win to get into the All-Star All Race, Jacob Davidson in the 9-9. Two's outside is the one of Dale Lightning. Then third's Mathis Wells. Fourth is Alexander Rowe. And rang out the top five, we have Josh Crash. In sixth, there's TJ Hanley. Seventh is Luke Rainey. Eighth, Adam McDowell. In ninth, we have Joe Jefferson. And Jeff Wright rounds up the top ten. The rest of the field, Diego Yapez, two's inside Levi Jones. Then behind them, Landon Lyons with Steve Larker, along with Jonathan Buford and Eli Bright. Then there's Stephen Taylor and Griffin Lynn, Oliver Galloway and Derek Hamill. Then we have Roberto Rivera and Greg Torres. Behind them, Tim Gary with Jake Galloway. Then there's Keegan Thompson and Ryan Taylor, along with Patrick Smith and Anthony Hernandez. Then there's Anthony Charlebois and Zachary Fitzwater Sr. Behind them, Code Luigi with Carter Friesen. Then we have Nathan Stapleton and Danny Lloyd. Trip McGinnis with Pena Salada, our points leader coming into this race, starting at the back end on the outside. Definitely going to lose a ton of points if he cannot catch up to Patrick Smith. Then we have Charles Robert and Jay Jefferson, Max Anderson with Justin Lightning, and in the final row, Lawrence Compound on the 24, who's outside the 21 of Sebastian Kukulon. There's our sign lap for the Goodies 400 at the Dover International Speedway. Let's get going with our starting command. Drivers, start your A great command to get these engines roaring here at the Monster Mile for 60 laps of action around this one mile banked oval in our first ever state. Jacob Davidson and Dale Lightning roll off the starting grid. They'll lead the green flag here for the Goodies 400. It's a race for track position in the inside lane means everything. If you start front on the inside, you have a good chance to win. If you start on the inside, you have a good chance to get at least a top 20 and top 15. We'll see what happens. 60 laps here at Dover. The possible final ever. Gatorade Cup Series or any series race at Dover. Here they come for the final time to the green flag at the Monster Mile. Could be the final time we get to the green flag here at Dover. The Gatorade Cup Series racing for one final time at the Dover International Speedway. Jacob Davidson from the pole leads lap one as he went high through three and four. Lucky though, Wells could not get to the inside. Luke Graham to third, the threat further back. In the middle is last season's champion TJ Hanley. Lynn to his inside, to his outside, Dale Lightning. They get soared back to double file as they hit turn three. Now Joe Jefferson might be up top three wide. Behind that, McDowell goes three wide to the middle lane. A four. Oh, contact McDowell and Ryan Taylor make, making contact. They luckily saved their cars, but the outside lane, how bad it is. Falling back already, Patrick Smith who started back in the 30s up inside the top 20. Zachary Fitzwater Sr. right on his bumper. So you can see how bad the outside lane is. Drivers like Josh Crash, Griffin Lynn, Joe Jefferson start inside the top 10. Quickly fading to almost outside the top 20. As for second, Luke Rainey on Mathis Wells. He's going to take it to turn one. Luke Rainey up to second. Wells falls back to fourth as Levi Schultz came through to third. Schultz started this race 11. Just shows what the inside lane can do. How about Hanley using that apron almost to make that pass back there? Luke has a strong car right now. He's closed in right onto the back of Jacob Davidson. As they come off turn four, that two is pretty fast. He can look to the inside here. He got a great run off turn four. That two car is strong. Luke Rainey to the inside. Jacob Davidson through one and two. Our pole sitter going to fall back as Luke Rainey starts just outside the top five. He goes to the race on that number five. Caution is out for the first time. It may have been Charles Robert and Nathan Stilton have wrecked. The yellow is out. Luke Rainey back in front. Levi showed second. Teammate Jacob Davidson, third, and Mathis Wells, and Jonathan B for the front five. Our first yellow of the day may have been for Charles Robert and Nathan Stapleton. So we'll see what happened. The yellow flag is out for the first time here at Dover. Here is the reason for the caution flag at the back of the field. Charles Robert in the middle of a three wide. Eli Bright, our target winner yesterday, falling back up top. Stapleton just kind of comes up a little bit up into Charles Robert. And around goes the nine car hard into the inside wall for that nine. Stapleton goes around as well. Salah so does a great job getting by. Our points leader. And luckily, Charles Robert didn't come up and collect any loans, but that's going to be some hard damage for that nine car. Stapleton's going to have some damage as well, although I think his damage would be less extensive than the nine of Robert. Robert's won two races this season, Pocono and the 600. Definitely not what he wanted to see after winning Pocono last race, being on a momentum swing. Now that's all going to be gone. He's going to finish possibly 41st or 42nd here today. 
Luke Gray just made the pass for the race lane. Jacob Davidson to get himself back to the caution flag in front. Shones in second. They stay out on the racetrack, wait for the pace guard to get caught up. Luke Rainey is going to lead us back to the green flag here at Dover. We come back to green on lap number 10, out front the number 2 of Luke Rainey. All 42 cars left in this race, the two that crashed, Nathan Stapleton, Charles Robert, 42nd and 41st respectively. We'll see if they can get up to speed on this restart. So leading this race right now, the number 2 of Luke Rainey, looking for his first win over a season of racing. Levi Schultz behind seconds on a long drought. He wants to get back to victory lane and glory in the Gatorade Cup Series. Jacob Davidson thirds in the top 10 points, but no victory put him out of the all-star race. Matthew Swells fourth, Jonathan Buford fifth. Inside the top five, Levi Schultz, Jacob Davidson, Matthew Swells looking for an all-star berth. We are back racing at Dover. Green flag in the Goodies 400. Rainey steps on the gas and Wells spun the tires from fourth. Allows the front three to break away. Shones getting a good push from teammate Davidson and look to the inside down the back stretch. Davidson makes that left though. Here comes the 99 for a second. Couldn't get that done. To turn three, three cards break away. Jonathan Beeford for fourth on Mathis Wells. He'll take it. Now Shones all over the back of Luke Rainey down the front stretch. All but pushing him to turn one. Does he look low? Does the two give that bottom lane up? Davidson falls back just a little bit, maybe a little tight there. Look at him almost four wide off turn two. Fitzwater backed out. Jay Jefferson made a big move in the 78. Through three and four. Shones up to the back of the two of Luke Rainey. But can't make the move quite yet. You need to get a good run here to make a move. We'll see if Shones can do it. They're racing aggressively back just outside the top 10. Three wide. Shones still all over the back of the two of Luke Rainey. One small mistake and Luke might go up the racetrack and a bumper maybe give him the yellow flag. is out. Two cars are upside down. Landon lines and Jake Galloway. Rainey leads us back once again. Our second caution flag out just after the first one. Torres, Landon Lyons, Luke, or excuse me, Jake Galloway, Derek Hamill involved. Carter Friesen as well as Hernandez. It was the third one, the 11, that were upside down. The yellow flag for the second time, and it's in a massive way. Two cars upside down, including the 11 of Jake Galloway. We'll see you the reason for caution number two here at Dover. This wreck took a while to get started. Jake Galloway down low and a three wide. Hernandez in the middle, Landon Lyons up top. Hernandez kind of squeezes Jake down. Jake trying to come up. The 48 definitely has room to come up. Then the 48 starts ping-ponging between the 31 and the 11. Finally spins both of them around. Lines goes up into the field. Jake's good. Just missed that inside wall. Come up. And that outside wall right there hits. The 31 gets hit into the 11. Rolls over the 11. And then flips the 11 over himself. So Hamill hits the 31 of Land Lines. Sends him flipping into the 11 of Jake Galloway. Which flips the 11 over in the process. I've never seen anything like that, but that's a hard crash for Galloway and Landon Lyons. Jake thought he maybe had it saved once he missed the inside wall, but came up into the outside wall. There's the ping pong back and forth right here, up into the outside wall, hard for those two. And the Hamill hits Landon Lyons up into the up into the 11 and flips them both over. That's just a horrible crash for those two drivers. Something you'd never expect to have happen. I, th I just think Hernandez could be a lot higher than he was down to Jake Galloway. And Right there. Those hard hits in the outside wall, and there's the flip. Oh, and then up ahead, Friesen got nailed. Couldn't tell. I think it was with Greg Torres. They got together, and they hit hard. So as they missed the crash, oh, Friesen got hit by Hernandez, came up, and oh, my gosh, Torres goes for a flip. And lands back on all fours, but a huge, huge crash. And the caution flag out for the second time. Luke Rainey in the two leads us back to the yellow flag. Once again, they are on pit road, but is everyone on the pit lane? It's hard to tell because I think the field's a little spread out because of some issues that are getting caught. But yes, everyone is on the pit lane. So they possibly think they can make it from here on fuel. Luke Rainey in the two. Into his pit stall. Is it going to be two or four? Looks like Sean's putting on four. That was a long stop for the two of Luke Rainey on those right sides. And he leaves with only two tires. So Luke Rainey, two tires and going, just possibly getting most fuel in the car. Shown's contact with Steve Larkin leaving, but he has four tires on that machine. Same with Jacob Davidson and Jonathan Buford. So four tires for everyone but our race leader, Luke Rainey. It's going to be an interesting restart. Can Luke hold on with those two tires? Can someone get around him on four? Green flag this time by lap number 17. Luke Rainey, two tires, gets him out in front on pit stops. Landlines, Jake Galloway both flipped over in that crash. They're both out. 
Greg Torres a lap down the 10 even after flipping. He's still on the racetrack. Steve Larker a lap down to do his issues in the pits. He'll restart right here 39th. So Luke Rain leading the race on two tires though. Everyone behind him is on fourth. Levi Jones, Jacob Davidson, Jonathan Beaufort, and Oliver Galloway up to fifth. So there are two and four tires mixed in. But Jones and Davidson definitely on four tires along with Beaufort for this restart. So we'll see how Luke Rain can do on two. That's an interesting call for the two team. We'll see how it works out. Down the back stretch, Jones is looking low. But Jacob Davidson even lower than 99 car from pole. Back for a second. And the summer coming down pit road. Silver race here as I've hit the pits, including the 17, the 2, the 99, the 13, the 26, and the 83. Those were our front five. It leads TJ Hanley with the race lead. Lynn in second. Yepes up to third. Fitzwater for fourth. Big change in the running order here at Dover as our front runners pit, including the drivers that dominated the 2, the 17, the 99, and the 13. And it leaves last season's champion out front. Two seasons ago, champion Griffin Lynn in second. Yepes third. Fitzwater fourth. And Ryan Taylor now up to fifth. How about Mathis Wells up inside the top 10 to sixth? And Cole Luigi, Jake Jefferson coming forward in the inside lane with Pena Salata, who was after starting at the back in the outside row, that that 77 team would be fighting for a top 10. But nonetheless, it's just gotten on Patrick Smith and has a shot. Yes, Salata could extend the points after the day they've had. That would be very, very big. As cars now merge out of the pits, this could be dicey for some of our front runners, including like. The 8-3, they're coming up, but here they come three wide back here, trying to come up Tim Gary. But looks like he will get up before any contact made. It looks like everyone comes up, but a huge, huge miscue for so many of our front runners. Puts Luke Rainey, Levi Sh look at Davidson's two laps down, Rainey's two laps down, Buford, Shones, Gary, Oliver Galloway, all two laps down. He leaves 31 cars on the lead lap. TJ Hanley leads them. So they come down the front stretch. Hanley in the A2, a champion of the series, has had a mediocre season. And he has more than half the race left. But once again, as I've been mentioning, track position means everything here at Dover. So if you have it, you're probably not going to lose it. Look at that seven running wide there. Running a bigger arc, trying to get the grip up high. As four fourth, Mathis Wells, a raging bull through a china shop. Coming through, getting by Zachary Fitzwater Sr. for fourth. And here comes Ryan Taylor for fifth in the 09. Keeps Fitzwater up top as Lynn is gaining on Hanley for the lead. Here he comes to turn three. He has a good run. Once again, trying to use a higher lane. There's a little more grip up there. From what I've been seeing, the higher lane works in three and four. But you want to be on the bottom through one and two. Oh, there may have been a wreck. The yellow flag is out as it, Roberto Rivera has crashed in the 12. So our third yellow of the day. Two cars racing back to the caution. Hanley and Griffin Lynn. And they come off turn number four. Lynn all over the back of Hanley. Give it to the A2 at the start finish line. The seven and second. So the yellow comes out just before halfway. Our third time in the afternoon. Roberto Rivera crashed in three and four. So here's the first incident that didn't bring out a caution flag. They're four wide off turn number four. That's never going to work. You see Kugelon and John Thiefer get together. They save their cars, but Thiefer maybe some debris on those tires comes up and spins the car around. Luckily, just taps the outside wall, doesn't spin all the way around. No yellow comes out for that. That's the smoke we saw in one and two. And then the caution came out. We thought it was for that in one and two, but in three and four, right there, crash gets in the back. Rivera never lifts and spins him around hard. Go both drivers into the outside wall. 12 slides down. Luckily, no one hits him hard. Larker gets some side damage. But that was very interesting there. Crash, obviously, probably not too happy with Rivera, who was down low there. I'm wondering if Crash was trying to get a nice arc, and Rivera kind of came up and blocked that. Crash was not lifting. That's definitely hard damage for Crash as he got damage to both sides of that race car. So the yellow flag comes out and it cancels the battle we're going to have between the two champions, TJ Hanley and Griffin Lynn. Hanley back in front, Lynn in second. They'll restart that way at the green flag. Here they come. Restart lap number 29. TJ Hanley, the A2, is out front. Last season's champion looking for his first victory of the season. No more cars retired. 31 cars on the lead lap, led by TJ Hanley. In the 82, behind him in second, Griffin Lynn in the seventh. Then Diego Yapez third, Mathis Wells fourth, Ryan Taylor fifth. Then we have Ed McDowell sixth, Cole Luigi seventh, Zachary Fitzwater senior eighth, Jay Jefferson ninth, and tenth is Anton Charles Bois. The 83, Valor Galloway two laps down. Remember, he came up here road under the green flag. So Hanley leading, he has control of this restart. When does he go? As we are back racing in the goodies forward, a great jump for TJ Hanley and Griffin Lynn. Yapez spun the tires from third. Does Wells break low? 
Yeah, I think Wells, he's going to get a good run here through one and two. He could possibly hang a left off turn number two. He's right to the back of the A7. Does he make that move? Stays in line for now. Now he goes low. Cole Luigi coming low. And McDowell trying to block that run. They stay in line for now. Now Ryan Taylor, a big move in the 09. That's for fourth. Off turn number four, side by side. Taylor, a little tight down, lost a lift. Wells still trying to get clear. And McDowell gets caught up to the top side. Now Cole Luigi comes to the bomb lane. The 42 looking for fourth. A big run for that 42 car. He might get three for one. He did. Luigi, seventh to fourth in one move through one and two. Now can he run down the front three? Contact back there. Danny Lloyd making contact there. I saw that. They saved it. Ryan Taylor up inside the top five. Zachary Fitzroy Sr. trying to rebound. Back up to sixth. As Anton Charles Bob behind the double zero. All but pushing Fitzroy to turn three. Wells in the 18 falling back in the outside. Tim Gary is also up top. Remember, he's a lap car. Up front, Bell for the lead. Lynn is all over the back of the A2. The 7 just a little bit better than TJ Hanley at this point in time. Off turn two and down the back stretch. Yepes is there in third. I don't think his car is as good as the front two, but it's good enough to try and stay in touch. He's using a high, higher lane through three and four, trying to get that grip up there, trying to get the run down the straightaway. I don't think it worked that well, though. I think he lost a little ground, if anything. Lynn, hungry for a win. Hanley, hungry for a win. The past two champions of the Gatorade Cup Series. Battling it out right now here at Dover. And not far behind them. In fourth is another Gatorade Cup Series champion, Cole Luigi. If he could get up to third, we could have the three past Gatorade Cup Series champions battling for the top spot. But Hanley has his hands full with Griffin. Lee. He's looking to the inside through one and two. He's got a nose this time down the back stretch. I think he's going to get him in turn three. I think he has enough of a run. Griffin Lynn, TJ Hanley battling for the lead here at Dover. Lynn in the seven. Going to clear Hanley who gets down in line second. Yeah, use the outside lane to get clear of Diego Yepes. Now can he get back around the seven? And as they're battling, Luigi's closing in fourth. It's a four car race at the front. 25 to go this time by. Griffin Lynn, TJ Hanley, Diego Yepes. One, two, three. Yepes for second on TJ, who went a little high through one and, or through three and four. Yepes is going to grab second. Luigi now for 30. Went up the right track. He chased the A2 up. Cole Luigi to third in the 42 car. Hanley back to fourth. Ryan Taylor could get that fourth position. If Hanley cannot get down line, TJ's going to try and use that high lane like he did with Yepes. He does get down in line in fourth. So great job by Hanley there. Getting down line for the second time, but that A2 car is fading after getting back in this dirty air. I think it was just a clean air that was keeping Hanley out front at that point. Lynn was definitely stronger. But now Yepes, he looks a little bit stronger than the 7. Can he close in on, on Griffin Lynn and make a pass? He has just over 20 laps to do it. And we could get some more caution flags. That's not, that's not being ruled out either. Griffin Lynn using a higher lane on both ends of the racetrack. Yepes about half a lane lower. And I think he gains both, both ends of this track. I think he closes in using that lower lane right there. That car rotates so well on the bottom. Yepes closes into with an, a car length of Griffin Linda turn one. 21 to go next time. Bye. There's a bow for third. Hanley wants to get back up to the front, but he fades through one and two. Luigi pulls a nice little gap to about car length. Down the back stretch. Back there, there's two champions of different series battling. This is for seventh. Adam McDowell, the Target Series champion of last season. Ben with the Pennzoil Truck Series champion, Mathis Wells of last season. Some great battles all around this racetrack, especially with some big name drivers that are battling. As Lynn trying to haul off Yepes, but it's not for long. Yepes is in the bottom lane to his advantage. Down the back stretch, side by side. This is for the lead. Yepes to the bottom of Lynn through three and four. He got a little tight. Luigi closes in the 42. Does he take a three wide for the lead? Here it comes Cole Luigi with the run. Side by side for the lead. 20 to go at Dover. Cole Luigi out for the 42. TJ Hanley back up to second as he gets by Diego Yepes, who gets stuck up top. Now Lynn the 7 coming through. Here comes the lap car of Oliver Galloway. He comes to the bottom. I think the A3 is just a lap or two fresher tires, which could be helping him out. There is car just really fast. He's just trapped a lap down or two. So Lynn on the outside now because the A3 is going to fall back outside the top five possibly. And to drop off to fourth now in the double zero. How about Mathis Wells in the 18? Can he get beneath the seven of Griffin Lynn to move inside the top five? The 18 car, big run to get up a position. 
And up there, Hanley struggling in second. Lin gets down line, but he's outside the top five, back to sixth behind Charles Bois and Mathis Wells. How about Hanley, though? He's losing ground to Code Luigi. Went high that time through one and two. Lost ground to that 42 with 18 to go. And Yepes is there like, man, get out of the way. I'm faster than you. But Hanley, he's a tough guy to pass right here, though. Yepes might have him. Off corner number four, Diego Yepes. Beneath TJ Hanley gets around him. 17 laps to get around Code Luigi now. And Oliver Galloway there in the A3 is there. Remember, he's two laps down. The A3 car is. Griffin Lynn coming back forward. He's bound for his fifth position with Mathis Wells. Luigi went high that time. That's back here. Lynn does move back to fifth. Wells going to get kicked back outside the top five. But Luigi went up the racetrack that time through three and four. Allowed Diego Yepes to close in about a car length or two. Fifteen laps to go this time by. Code Luigi trying to win his first Gatorade Cup Series race in over two seasons. It's been since season six, the first Atlanta race since he's gone to victory lane. But here comes Oliver Galloway, the lap car. He'll get beneath Yepes, slow the 87 down. Now TJ Hanley and the 82 back up to second. Those are the drivers Hanley has to worry about. But he also has to worry about the 83 of Oliver Galloway, who's running blazing fast laps, being two laps down. He's coming to 14 to go. TJ Hanley does move to second. How about Anton Charbaugh up to third? That double zero team has not quit here. That double zero coming forward, lap after lap. Yepes falls back now. He might fall to the top five. Griffin Lynn for fourth. He's going to get that position. So Griffin Lynn now back up inside the top five. Yepes back to fifth. Trying to get down line for Adam McDowell. He can't. McDowell gets down low. This is the battle for fifth, sixth, and seventh. It's Diego Yepes, Adam McDowell, Mathis Wells. 13 to go at Dover. This is a big battle. Fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. McDowell's going to finally grab fifth. Yepes now bound with Max Anderson for sixth. He'll get that spot. Now Anderson and Mathis Wells are side by side. But up here, Oliver Galloway could hand this race to his teammate TJ Hanley if he gets beside Code Luigi. There's 12 laps left. If that 42 gets stuck up top, Hanley could get down there. Code really needs the A3 to pass him and pass him fast. Oliver is definitely faster. I think he's on some fresher tires. We'll see what happens. 11 to go this time by. Luigi a little tight through 3 and 4. The A3, obviously, something is good with that car right now. He's pressuring our race leader, Code Luigi. Remember, that A3, though, he's not on the lead lap. As much as this looks like a great battle for the lead, Oliver Galloway's the first car, two laps down the A3 car. Ten to go this time by. Code Luigi, the lap car of Oliver Galloway, in between he and second place, TJ Hanley. This time, though, Oliver Galloway gets beneath the 42. Ten to go at Dover, and our race leader's on the outside lane with second place right there. Hanley to the bottom lane. Can TJ Hanley thank his teammate Oliver Galloway if he gets to victory lane? Hanley gonna get by Code Luigi. They stay high through three and four. Now Anton Charlebois for second. Gonna get by Code Luigi falls back to third. Nine to go. Luigi might fall back to fourth here if he cannot get down line front Griffin Lim right here. See if he can get it done off turn two contact. They saved their cars. That was close there. It's about for third. Luigi doesn't get down line. Now, TJ Hanley has no lap cars to deal with. He just has to deal with this mirror. Anton Schraub on the double zero is there. Eight to go at Dover. Schraub using a higher length through one and two. I don't think that's the way to go. We'll have to see, though. Battle back there for fourth. Griffin Lynn and Diego Yapez. Lynn gets down in line. Some great racing here to over mention on track position is going to mean a lot, but we have had lead changes. We have had battles throughout the field. How about this? Pinas Lost are back outside row in the 30s. Now up to 7th, ahead of Patrick Smith, and would gain points on 2nd and points. An amazing drive by the 77 team. No quit attitude in that team. But the biggest story is with 6 to go, TJ Hanley leading this race. Last season's champion wants to get back to victory lane in the Gatorade Cup Series. Six laps to get it done. Anton Charles on the double zero there in second. Luigi and Griffin Lincoln be bound for third. These are two champions of the series. In fact, our front four, three of them are champions of the Gary Cup Series. All the last three champions. They go through three and four. Charles Bar way up the track that time gives Hanley some breathing room. Five to go, five miles at Dover. The yellow flag would end it. TJ Hanley, Anton Charles Bois, Code Luigi, one, two, three. Now they do have lap traffic ahead. 
Greg Torres, remember, was upside down in that last crash. I don't know if he'll be a factor. They have four laps, but that is just something to note. He is ahead. That presence is looming. Wow, for fourth. Lynn is getting bounced around. Yepes going to move a spot closer to the front. He moves to fourth. Anderson to fifth. Now Anderson for fourth. Lynn back and could lose a spot to Salada. Anderson for fourth on Yepes. They are side by side. This come to three to go. Luigi closed down Charles Bob, but it's going to be too late for that 42 unless something happens major up in front of him. Three to go. Salada for more spots in the 77. Wants to break inside the top five. A top 10 is not enough for that 77. They're catching Greg Torres. They're coming to two to go when they're going to catch him. This will decide this race. If Torres stays high right here, he'll be good. Just let our race leaders get around. Hanley gets up into the 10. Gets around, though. Two to go, but he gets held up. Tight, underneath the 10. Charles Bois closes in the double zero. Now can Charles Bois negotiate the 10. Contact for second. Charles Bois to the inside wall in the double zero. Falls back to third. Keeps it going straight. The white flag this time by. And Hanley has some breathing room. Cars hit the pits in front of him. White flag at Dover for TJ Hanley. Last lap. Call the Ouija in second in case the A2 possibly runs out of sputters. Through one and two for TJ Hanley. Call Luigi is second. But he's too far back to make a move. Charles Bois going to try and hang on for third. To turn three. TJ Hanley's had a mediocre season thus far. A win's going to turn around as he comes off turn four. First win of the season. TJ Hanley gets back to victory lane at Dover. Hanley, or excuse me, Hanley wins. Code Luigi second. I think Anton Charles Bois did hang on to third. After almost spinning underneath lap traffic. And Pena Salada are points there. Going to extend the points. He finishes in the sixth position. Patrick Smith ninth. Craziness here at Dover at the end. Hanley out front at the right time. His teammate did help him a little bit there. Galloway did pass. Cole Luigi got him put back. Hanley wins the Goodies 400. Let's go check the finishing results. Here are the finishing results from the Goodies 400, the Dover International Speedway. Three caution flags for 12 laps, six lead changes, and six different drivers led laps in this race. It was definitely a well deserved Dover race, the final Dover race, possibly in the Gary Cup series. It was a great one to end it. TJ Hanley wins it, started sixth. Ends up leading 31 laps. That was more than halfway. Obviously, the most laps led. Victory lane for that 82 team. Code Luigi ends up second. 10 laps led. He definitely had maybe one of the cars to beat here today. Started 31st. He wasn't really a factor until those drivers that started up front came down the pit road under the green flag. Entered Charles Bois third. Max Harrison fourth. And Griffin Lynn fifth. How about Pena Salah sixth? Adam McDowell seventh. Diggly Lopez eighth. Patrick Smith ninth. And Joe Jefferson, Smith's teammate, rounds out the top 10. So there's our top 20. Salada with that 6th place finish does gain points on Patrick Smith because Smith only finished ninth. So how about that? Your front two points once again top 10th, but Salada still that little bit better. Extends the points just a little bit. But how about inside the top 10? We mentioned our track position. It was all about track position, track position, track position. Inside the top 10, we had a few drivers that started inside the top 10. We had TJ Hanley start 6th, Adam McDowell 8th, and Joe Jefferson 9th. And then we had drivers like Yepes who started 12th. And then we had drivers like Salada who started 36th. Cole Luigi and Ted Charles 31st and 30th. Max Anderson, 40th. Patrick Smith, 27th. Sebastian Kukul ended up 12th and 42nd was his starting position. So definitely track position did not matter as much as we were maybe thinking it was going to. 28 cars on the lead lap at the end. Josh Kreischer tired at the end, 29th. Oliver Galway ended up a lap down only after his issues. But the big issues were with Shones, Davidson, Luke Rainey, and Jonathan Buford. The four dominant cars on the day. They were the front four that we thought were going to be bound for the lead. It was going to be Luke Ray, Shones, and Jacob Davidson. And with John Beefer possibly sprinkled in there, that could be bound for the lead at the end. However, some issues on pit road, maybe some loose wheels for all those drivers, maybe some penalties. Who knows what it was? All four of them had to come down pit road under the green flag right after the restart and put them back to two laps down. Shones, the highest of them, 34th. Davidson from the pole at four laps, 35th. And Luke Ray, 36th with eight laps led. Obviously, that's devastating for those guys because I honestly thought they were going to be the ones to battle for the win at the end. So after that Dover race, let's now go look at the points. Here are the point standings as we head from Dover, and we are now at the All-Star Race, a race where the race winner locks himself into the chase for season number eight. Pena Salada definitely wants that, but has the points fall back on if they do not get that win? Salada, a 225-point lead over Patrick Smith, and over 11th place has a 514-point lead. Something tells me Salada should be pretty good and set on making the chase this season. Patrick Smith is second in points. How about Salada, though? 17 races, double-digit top 10s already, 10 top 10s on the season. One of the most dominating performances we've seen so far in the Gary Cup Series. 
see if he could keep it going, though, in the chase. Smith, as we mentioned, was second. Steven Taylor, third. Sebastian Kukul on fourth. And Jacob Davidson down to fifth with his disappointing date. Looked like he could have been one of them battling for the win at the end. Trip is sixth. Cole Luigi's first top five of the season moves up to seventh in points. Max Anderson, eighth. Justin Lightning, ninth. And Dale Lightning rounds out the top ten. So there's the top 20. Our two wild cards right now. Josh Crash with his two wins in 13th. And TJ Henley, that win moves him up to 17th and in wild card position. For Henley this season, been feast or famine. He has four top 10s, which is a decent amount after 17 races. But seven DNFs have definitely limited his potential on the season. I think maybe if he had one or two or three less DNFs, he could be up further up in the points, possibly top 10. Luke Rainey, that bad day. He was in the chase starting the day, I believe. He falls to 19th. With that bad day that he had, definitely not what he wanted, but he is in the all-star race. Same with Charles Robert, who falls below the top 20. Those two wins would get him a wild card because he has multiple wins. It would overrule Hanley's. However, he's outside the top 20. He needs to be top 20 to use those wins. Car Fries in 31st. Steve Larker in 34th. And Alexander Rowe 38th. Obviously, those drivers, their wild card shots almost shot at this point. They're going to likely need to... Uh, they're going to likely need, need to rely on this all-star race, which they are locked into. Of course, the... Requirements to make it into the all-star race. We have winners from this season. We have chasers from last season. Past champions. And if you won a race in the second half of last season, you're also in. That leaves us 21 drivers that have locked their way in since TJ Henley already was in based on the championship they had last season. He was already in. This win did not affect anything. Now the front two, the two, the top two finishers in the all-star open automatically advance their way in. That makes it 23 drivers. And then the one fan vote driver that wins the fan vote will be the last 24th driver in the event so we'll see how that goes the all-star open is the next race it's not talladega we will go to homestead for the all-star race in the all-star open hope to see you guys for that race it's gonna be an interesting one for sure